International Holdings Limited 歡迎曬咁多位 ，Welcome all！ 咁而家我哋先請啊嘉賓為我哋支持，我哋有請中國香港單車總會會長梁昌明先生啦，為我哋致歡迎辭嘅，有請梁會長。尊敬嘅中聯辦宣傳文體部朱建平處長、康樂及文化事務處劉明光處長、港協嘅奧委會郭振廷會長、大型體育活動事務委員會吳秀基主席、各位贊助商代表、各位嘉賓、各位運動員、新聞界朋友、現場觀眾，大家好。我僅代表中國香港單車總會，歡迎來自世界各地嘅車手、技術官員同埋國際裁判參加我哋呢次嘅國家杯場地單車賽。首先，非常感謝國際單車聯盟 UCI 可以俾我哋再次舉辦國家杯場地單車賽。香港喺上一次舉辦國家杯場地單車賽已經係二零二一年三年前。我哋當時係疫情嘅時候，我哋以北部嘅形式舉行。當時未有機會俾市民嚟到呢個現場觀賞賽事，所以事隔三年，相信大家都非常之期待再次入到單車館為我哋港隊打氣。二零二四 UCI 國家杯場地單車賽一共有三個賽站，而我哋香港係第二個賽站，參賽嘅國家地區。超過四達四十九個，包括咗澳洲、比利時、法國、德國、英國、意大利、荷蘭、西班牙、日本、哈薩克、韓國同埋我哋國內嘅建議。響近四百名參賽車手裏面，咧，有唔少都係世界冠軍，同埋響奧運會裏面攞過獎牌嘅。佢哋將會響呢個場館裏面爭奪。世界錦標賽同埋巴黎奧運會嘅積分，相信嚟緊三日嘅賽事會非常之精彩。喺我哋嘅牛下女車神李慧思退役咗之後，港隊我哋繼續維持強勢。我哋喺亞洲亞運，我哋喺杭州亞運會贏得一金三文二銅嘅佳績，其中喺場地賽方面。港隊更首次贏得咗女子全能賽，以及女子團隊追逐賽嘅獎牌。港隊今次我哋派出咗六男七女，共十三名健兒出戰。男車手我哋包括有杜卓希、翁俊浩、莫子俊、曹啟剛、廖正賢。女車手我哋有李思穎、梁穎兒。楊彩瑤、吳思穎、程燕山、梁寶儀同埋童心，希望市民可以透過今次嘅賽事多啲認識佢哋，亦都同時同我哋大力咁打氣。除咗賽事之外咧，為咗令到國家杯嘅活動更加多元化，聽日我哋一連兩日咧，響單車館內邊咧，我哋會設有嘉年華，屆時會有唔少以單車為主題嘅遊戲。活動同埋展示攤位，大家記得嚟玩下，贏取紀念品，而仲有機會咧係贏取入場券入嚟呢度觀賽嘅。二零二四年 UCI 國家杯場地單車賽，中國香港能夠成功嘅舉辦，我哋要感謝特區政府、文化體育及旅遊局、大型體育活動事務委員會、康樂及文化事務處、各大贊助商，包括咗香港賽馬會。以及各義工同埋工作人員嘅支持同配合，令到賽事可以順利咁舉行。最後，我代表賽事籌委會祝願今次響香港參賽各國競兒越戰越勇，創出佳績。各位裁判、工作人員工作順利，享受香港嘅賽事。亦祝願各位觀眾有一個愉快嘅晚上。多謝大家。唔該曬，梁會長。Thank you, Mr. l e r 跟住落嚟咧，我哋有請國際單車聯盟 UCI 委員會委員 Mr. Dato Amaji Singh 叫致辭。
Now let's hear from Mr. Dato Amaji Singh here from UCI Management Committee member. Mr. Singh, please. Ni hao. Mr. Zhu Jianpeng, Director of the Publicity, Culture and Sports Affairs of the Chinese Government. Mr. Liu Mingkyong, Director of the LCST. Dr. Raymond Leong, President of the Hong Kong Cycling Association. Mr. Leung Hung Tak, the Chairman of the Hong Kong Cycling Association. Mr. Wilfred Ng, the Chairman of Major Sports. Mr. Simon Leong, the Secretary of the Hong Kong Cycling Association and the Chairman of the Organizing Committee. Mr. Timothy Fock from the National Olympic Committee of Hong Kong. Dr. Ko Yot Wing, Regional Commander of Hong Kong Police. Mr. Wong Yong Kyung, Chief Staff of the AMS. My friend, Mr. Alfred Lee. Respective uh, members, res respective officials from the respective consulate and the embassies who are present here today. All the sponsors who are also present here today. Technical officials, UCI staff, UCI commissars, team members, riders and officials, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pleasure to be here today in Hong Kong representing the UCI for this wonderful event, the UCI Track Nations Cup second leg. I would like to congratulate the, um, the Hong Kong Cycling Association for the tremendous effort and work that has been put in by them uh, in order to organize this Memont event here today. And Hong Kong Cycling never fails to deliver. So let's give them a round of applause. All this is not possible without the strong support, the strong commitment from the Chinese government, from the Hong Kong government, and also from all the sponsors who are here today to give their commitment, to give their full support towards the organization of this event. I'd like to mention that this event is a very important milestone event because this counts to the qualification towards the Paris 2024 Olympic uh, organizing uh, for the Olympic Games and therefore I would like to once again thank Hong Kong for this uh, tremendous effort that has been put in. I would like to uh, not take much uh, of the time, I would like to at the same time wish all team members, all riders the very best in this uh, Track Nations Cup and uh, let the event begin. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Please remain on. of the lead-up towards the Paris Olympic Games. We had the first round in Adelaide a month ago, and then next month we head to Milton in Canada for the third and final round of the Track Nations Cup Series. Then they can look at the points that have been accumulated throughout all the teams to see who gets to qualify to race at the Paris Olympic Games. That's how important these races are. Spectacular velodrome here in Hong Kong, China. Of course, they had the World Championships in 2017. And there are several of the world champions still here in the cycling fraternity, moved into the coaching and administration roles. 250 metre, beautifully presented velodrome here. And it is the first of three nights of competition for the UCI Track Nations Cup, proudly presented by Tissot Timing. And a big evening of racing to come. We have the women's team sprint first round, men's elimination onto the track for the endurance riders. 
And you can see the stats of the track itself. 41.9 degree banking. And even down the straights with a little bit of uh, sharpness to them at 12.4 is the degrees. Stunning velodrome, long straights on this one as well, 285 metres. And we saw some great qualifying this afternoon and a big surprise in particular in the men's team sprint. The top eight teams coming through into the finals, into the next round. The Netherlands finished ninth. So the current world champions. The first racing to get things underway here tonight, though, is the women's team sprint. We also have the world champions in Germany. They were the second fastest this afternoon. Great Britain with the fastest time in the women's team sprint. So that should be fantastic as we go through the rounds. And there's the lineup for the evening's race in men's elimination, as I mentioned. Men's team sprint also. Into the women's team pursuit finals. We also have the men's team pursuit later tonight as well. Current world champions Denmark are in to the final up against Japan, which would be a fascinating race for them. Some of the young riders, the next generation of the youth here, will be on the track as well tonight. So looking forward to seeing how they go. The women also have their elimination race as well. And then the final presentations. She's a short, fast, compact program here tonight. Action-packed, lots of fantastic racing to come our way. And we will see some of the innovation throughout the teams, whether it's wheels, bikes, handlebars, or clothing, that they are looking to present at the Olympic Games in Paris later this year. And the opening ceremony, very spectacular here inside the velodrome in Hong Kong. so many of the administrators and dignitaries that we have to thank for bringing such high-level racing to this part of the world. Ding dong, here's the sound of the bell when they all come to the final lap. We'll be hearing that plenty of times tonight. Final photo opportunities. And I can see in the background that the track is starting to get ready. The uh, Officials bringing the start gates out onto the track for the first event of the evening to kick off this second of the three Track Nations Cups series for the year. We will see the Netherlands up against New Zealand in the first race tonight. In the women's team sprint, followed by China versus Poland, Germany up against France, and then it's Great Britain versus Mexico. Plenty of noise inside the velodrome here in Hong Kong, creating a fantastic atmosphere to get the first night of competition underway. As I said, we did have qualifying this afternoon, but it wasn't broadcast. We're only broadcasting the evening sessions, the finals, the races for the medals. As you see the Irish team pursuit riders getting themselves ready. They really have come on strong. A couple of years ago, finished third in the European Championships in the team pursuit. So they really have built a fantastic squad of endurance riders for Ireland in recent years. They were the second fastest in the qualifying this afternoon, Ireland. So going strong in these last couple of seasons. It was New Zealand that had the quickest time with the 4.17. Ireland with the 4.20. Australia with the third fastest with the 4.22. 
Japan, fourth fastest, 4.24. In the first round, in the women's team pursuit, New Zealand brought that time down to 4.13. They have been on incredible form this last 12 months or so, really looking towards the Paris Olympic Games, New Zealand. Perhaps the favourites are Great Britain for the top step of that podium, but New Zealand, who was second to them last year at the World Championships in Glasgow, certainly will be looking to improve it. Just one more step on the podium. We'll see if they can... Get the win here tonight up against the next lot of teams. Japan really have come on strong. They've been very well known as a sprint nation with their Japanese Kirin series for so many decades now as a background and breeding ground for those pure sprinters. But they have set themselves tonight. Uh, this afternoon, they broke their uh, the Japanese record in the men's team pursuit. They set that record at the Adelaide round of the Track Nations Cup a month ago with a 350, and then this afternoon they rode 348. So the men's team pursuit team really are coming on strong. There's Aaron Gate from New Zealand, World Points Race Champion in Glasgow last year, and an integral part of the New Zealand team pursuit team. The we are only moments away of getting the first race underway and coming up onto the track now. You can see the team from the Netherlands. Steffi van der Piet, Kira Lamberink, and Hetty van der Waal. And they will be up against New Zealand on the other side of the track. It's Olivia King, Rebecca Petch, and Shane Fulton. Our third and fourth fastest winning team. Will race for bronze. We welcome to the match straight the team of New Zealand. So four the heats. And, Shane and the fastest two in the, in the winning the heats the the will go into the race for Seven gold and silver. Right, Third and fourth and fastest Eddie winners will race for the bronze medal. So regardless who you're up against in this round in the women's team sprint, you must win to progress into the medal round. And only the two fastest winners will get to race for gold and silver. Three laps of the track for the women's team sprint. That is the new situation the last couple of years now. It has come in with three riders. It started out for the women with only two, three for the men, as always been. And they've now stepped it up to three riders for the ladies. Germany have been the dominant force for the last couple of years at world championship level. But as we saw this afternoon, Great Britain have really come on very strong in the last 12 months. Final preparations. The men's squad are the world champions for the Netherlands. The Australians were the world champions two years ago. So a lot of crossover for the Dutch women to have the world champions on the training track with them all the time. For now, it's up to Steffi, Kyra and Hetty, up against Olivia, Rebecca and Shane. New Zealand versus the Netherlands. New Zealand are set to go, but we are still waiting for the starter's bike, it's well, the second and third position for, New Ze for uh, the Netherlands are OK. Then only now bringing up Steffi's bike onto the track to get into the start gate. Now, they haven't started the countdown clock yet because the bike hadn't been put up. I'm not sure exactly what was happening with the delay, causing that delay, getting that uh, first bike up onto the track.
hopefully she's not unsettled by that scramble right before the start. 30 seconds now, we hear the beep in the background. And she is now almost settled. Coach giving the final instructions. New Zealand have been very patient and ready for quite some time. Three laps of the track, one lap for each rider. Third rider finishing off on their own. Winning this is important to make it through into the medal round. And the first race is well, underway now, here in Hong Kong, China. The the second round of the Tissot UCI Tissot. Track Very Nations start. Cup, this and it's the Netherlands the versus New, New Zealand. Zealand. The Netherlands Once were slightly again, quicker in qualifying, game. but New Zealand have gone out New to an Zealand incredibly fast Zealand. start. Hopefully that uh, scramble before the start have not affected them too much for, New, for the Netherlands, but New Zealand doing really well as they come around. Second rider about to finish their lap as the final rider comes through, and it's very close. So Netherlands coming back now. Very quick start for New Zealand, but an amazingly close final lap this is between the Netherlands and New Zealand. Van der Waal versus Fulton. And coming into the final straight for both teams, and it is the Netherlands that come from behind to get the win. And the timer, timing ta did continue here, so we'll just get confirmation on what that time was. But it was the Netherlands that will progress into the medal rounds. Which colour medal they'll be racing for, that's still to be determined. Would come back from them. Fantastic start from Olivia King. And there is confirmation, 54.247. The world record is 45.848 for Germany. Not quite convinced by that time if it was correct or not. I think it might have been a little bit too slow. But the Netherlands got the win over New Zealand, so they will progress into the medal round. Up next will be China versus Poland. And then it's Germany up against France. A lot of pressure on the French as well with the Home Olympics coming. And they are a long way down in the overall point standings in terms of qualifying a team sprint team. And then the final race will be Great Britain versus Mexico. So for China, we have Wang Ling, Gao Yufeng and Bao Shanju. For Poland, it's Nikola Sibiak, Malina Kavaka and Ursula Loss. First lap, battle will be between Yang and Sibiak. The nervous final moments before the start of a team sprint. Not unusual to see a false start in these team sprints. The second and third riders so nervous to get underway. Second race of the night now. China versus Poland, women's team sprint. China the faster of these two teams in the qualifying rounds. Good start from them as well. 11.3 for the first half lap get a real indication just what sort of speed they're traveling at at the end of the first 18.509 nice first lap for china only 0.2 of a second though coming around for two laps completed now final lap sound of the bell and it's about the same still so this is going to be a great battle between poland and china on this final lap can poland come back to get themselves into the medal races china would be expecting to go for a medal here and they will indeed. So they extend that lead, 46.87. I think also very much indicating that the times were way off for that first race, the Netherlands versus New Zealand. That has been adjusted now. So the Netherlands rode 47.24 and China 46.8. So very rapid indeed there for the Chinese team. Good start from them, but the third rider really did bring it home strong. Welcome to the team. Now onto the track. In the back straight, welcome to the team of France. Matilda Brode 
So just to recap, the Netherlands with a 47.244 and New Zealand 47.683 were the times of that first race. And China now with the quickest time, 46.87. Next race on the track, the current world champions, Germany up against France. Germany in the home straight, second fastest qualifiers, and sporting those lovely rainbow bands, signifying they are the current world champions, winning that title in Glasgow last year. For Germany, we have Sophie Friedrich, Pauline Grabosch, and Emma Hinzer. Coming up onto the track now. And for France, Mathilde Gros, Julie Michaud, and Taki Kumami. And they had the order there of Hinza, Grabosch, and Frederick, but it is, as usual, Paulina Grabosch in position number one for the world champion team. Big showdown, traditional nations for cycling, especially on the track, Germany versus France. And I mentioned earlier, France with a lot of work to do to guarantee themselves the maximum number of spots for the Paris Olympic Games. They are right down the bottom of the list when it comes to the team sprint qualifiers. It's a lot of work for them to do. Germany, as expected, 0.5 of a second up at the end of the first lap. Grabosch with an incredible opening first lap here in Hong Kong. Hinza goes through and then unleashes Friedrich into the back straight. Mathilde Gros for France. And there's a lot to overcome here. 1.3 seconds. So the win comfortably going to go to Germany as they come through with a 46.5. So that's the quickest time so far in these first rounds. And a very comfortable win there for Germany. So they progress through into the medals. And with that time, it guarantees that they will be in the race for gold and silver. With only one heat to come. Forty-six-five qualifies Germany and France. Long way back in forty-seven point seven. And they will have one more chance at the Milton World Cup to gain enough points to guarantee themselves a spot at their home Olympic Games in the team sprint. The final heat coming onto the track now and looking at a dominant force in recent months. Great Britain really have put together an incredible package. Emma Finucane, Katie Marchant, and Sophie Capewell. On the other side of the track, they're racing against Mexico. Daniela Gaziola, Jessica Salazar, and Paola Ferdugo. So you can see it's not only the team coaches scrambling to put the bikes into the start gate. It's the officials as well to make sure everything's adjusted for all the different bikes and often now we're seeing with the new bike, especially the French double seat tube and the British team also have a double split seat tube for their Olympic bike and that's causing some challenges to get them into the starting gates quickly. Mexico in the back straight. Gaxiola, Salazar and Ferdugo. Up against Fanukan, Marchant, and Capewell. Winner to progress to the medal round. And the double firing of the gun, false start. I didn't see it, but the starter certainly did. Focus immediately onto Great Britain, and they are allowed to have one false start. New rule that has come in though if you pull a foot out of the pedal, that was 
up until recently allowed a restart and they have now taken that out. That if you do pull a foot, that's it. You're out of the competition, which is similar to the old rules in the timed events. And they did change that a little while back. But that wasn't the case in this situation. It was just purely a false start. If they have a false start again, it doesn't matter which team it is, either side of the track, they will be eliminated. Always makes the restart so nervous. They are desperately trying to get the timing right to maximise their chances of putting in a good time. So they'll just have to have a pause before the start this time. Make sure that they do not have a false start. Now, at the first round in Adelaide, the World Championship team of Germany, they were relegated, disqualified from uh, their first round, or well, the qualifying it was. They had a problem with, uh, M with uh, Paulina Grabosch, but they were not allowed a restart. So we're hoping that Great Britain don't have the same situation here. Mexico looking very quick to get ready and going. Great Britain still paused. So take two, Great Britain versus Mexico, the fourth heat in the women's team sprint first round, winner only to progress. We know that Germany will be racing for gold and silver. Is it going to be against the team that we expect to be there, Great Britain? China with the second fastest time at the moment. So 46.5 for Germany, 46.8 for China, and the Netherlands with a 47.2. They are the three teams that have won their way through to the next round. So for Great Britain, they only need to be faster than China to guarantee themselves a race against Germany for gold. The fourth and final heat of the women's team sprint first round. And it's the favourites, Great Britain, Fanukan, Marchant and Capewell up against Mexico. Gaxiola, Salazar and Ferdugo. Giving just a nice little bit of distance to run at the bike in front. Good changeover and a very fast first lap. 18.8 for Great Britain. And look at that margin, 0.8 of a second after one lap of this track. Such a fast team, so much depth in the great British squad. Second changeover, making sure the second rider, third rider doesn't go past the rider they are doing the exchange with before the line. They were clear that time and they are flying around the track. So Great Britain coming up to finish their team sprints and a super quick time, 46.232. Almost two seconds the better of Mexico and they will be racing Germany in the final. That is coming up to, on tonight's program. So that's a clear message now to the Germans. Three tenths of a second faster than the German trio. Magnificent start there for Great Britain. So 46.232. Three tenths of a second faster. Doesn't seem that much, but in a team sprint, that's quite a margin. Fantastic ride there for Great Britain. And a 48.171 for Mexico, who were the slowest of the teams in the qualifying round. And again here in the first round, that was the slowest time that we did see. So that's what we'll have later on tonight. Germany versus Great Britain, and then the Netherlands up against China. 47.2 versus 46.8. There's four tenths of a second the difference between the teams racing for the bronze medal. On paper, it looks fairly clear cut, but it's never that clear when it comes to the racing itself. Endurance athletes coming out now for the men's elimination race. And if you haven't watched an elimination, elimination race before, it's quite unique. Rather than focusing on who's first across the line, we focus at the back of the peloton. 
every two laps, the last rider across the line will be eliminated from the race until they are down to two in a final sprint for the win. It's also one of the four elements of the Omnium event as well. It's been a world championship now for three years, I think it has been. And the first two won by Elia Viviani, the Italian superstar, former Olympic champion in the Omnium discipline. just about to come up onto the track now. Quick run through Belgium, represented by Jules Hesters. And we have Algeria, Yassine Chalel. Checha with Jan Vonez. Just recently returned from a stint here in Australia, raced the Australian National okay, Championship as an invitational international rider. Trinidad and Tobago with Akil Campbell. Spain with Martorell. Austrian rider Rafael Kokas. Latvia is also represented. As you look down the list, we mentioned the Two-time world champion in Elia Viviani. The Italians are represented here, not by Elia, but by uh, Michele Scattazzini. He's ridden this a couple of times now at National, Nations Cup level. Grant Kuntz from the USA. Another good rider, youngster from Australia in Graham Frisley. Very handy in this type of race. And Bridgestone is the Japanese registered team. Not a national team, but a trade team. And they have Shansuki Imamura racing for them. Aaron Gate for New Zealand. He'll certainly be one of the riders that uh, would be expecting to go all the way into those medals here tonight. Such a strong rider and is the current points race world champion. Very strong in the New Zealand team pursuit team. And won three gold medals at the Commonwealth Games a couple of years ago on the road and on the track. So Aaron Gate from New Zealand, look out for him. Still rolling around the track. Pretty slow to get themselves sorted here, the men for the elimination race. We will see the women's elimination later on tonight as well. So both elimination events for men and women on the program in this first day of competition here, the UCI Tissot Track Nations Cup. We're in Hong Kong, China. We've had Nations Cups here before, and of course the 2017 World Championships. So two Japanese riders in the race. One, as I mentioned, representing the Bridgestone team. But riding for their national team is Kashuki Kuboki. Not that it makes any difference for them, but uh, in terms of working together, I should say, but uh, certainly a better chance of getting a good result to have two. To have that extra rider by having a trade team registered for your nation, very handy for them. Unusual to see the officials allow the riders to take so long to get themselves up onto the start line. There might have been just a slight delay in proceedings from the judging perspective off the track. But they were allowing the riders to take their time to come around to get into the position now. They're not too far away from the start of the men's elimination. Second event on the program here on day one of the Track Nations Cup in Hong Kong, China.
Joel Matias from Portugal, just coming onto the track there. Another rider to watch. And finally, we are underway, the second event here in Hong Kong at the Track Nations Cup. It's the men's elimination. They'll have a couple of laps to get themselves sorted. So just this first parade lap before they officially get them underway. And then they will give an indication for each of the elimination laps. So last rider across the line every two laps as the race is now officially underway with our electronic starters pistol signaling this commencement commencement of the race and as they come around this time they should get the bell here it is for the first of the elimination laps and graham frizzley leads the way but it's the back of the bunch that we really have to focus and matias from portugal very high on the track fighting hard to come up around the outside there so he should be okay once he gets the run down the banking through this finishing straight he should be ooh, so should be okay. Olivos. Number 62 is Louis Olivos. First one to go. But Matias really close to staying in there. Or getting eliminated, I should say. Second of the elimination laps now. They come really quickly. It's nice and cruisy up front, but you're pushing into the wind. And again, Matias really dodging it at the back there. They're slow on this one. The decision has not been made just yet. So they are looking closely and they weren't able to make a quick decision. So they haven't given them another elimination lap. They want to make sure they very clear on who is in or out. And again, right at the back there is Joel Matias from Portugal. He was second at the European Championships in the elimination race. He knows how to do well here, but he has been so close to being eliminated each time. He'll be OK as they go through again this time. So the Latvian rider is the next one to go. If you ride at the front, you need to be strong. You'll be safe from your eliminations, but you may use a lot of energy. The easiest place to be is down the bottom at the back, but that's where it's dangerous. No room to move to go forward. And that could have been right at the very top there. Trinidad and Tobago, perhaps. Campbell. No. no. The rider from Egypt was eliminated. Down the bottom of the track. The officials also looking right at the very bottom to make sure riders are not improving their position underneath that black line and going onto the blue band. Not necessarily the last rider across the line. If they did do see a rider infringing the regulations, they will be eliminated instead. Hester's from Belgium in a safe position, but Kuboki is not rider for Japan. And he knows it. He gave up before he got to the line. He realized he had nowhere to go. A little bit of shoulder work there from Kokas from Austria, got himself out of the way and is way out of danger as he goes right around the front. And it is the rider from Kazakhstan is the next one to go. 
So you can see the smart riding there from Kokas. The lap before he realised he was in a dangerous and vulnerable pos position. Used his shoulders to get out of the way and then move right up around the front. Keeps himself in the race as we go into the next elimination lap. Matias with a look over the shoulder to realise he is last and must move to stay in this race. He's done this a few times tonight already. And he does it once more. It's right down the bottom. So Campbell from Trinidad and Tobago. Imamura riding for Team Bridge Lane is on the front of the peloton in the Asian Champions jersey. And Aaron Gate in danger here for New Zealand. Oh, he realised it too late though for Aaron Gate. So that's a big surprise to see someone as strong as Gate being eliminated. A lot of these riders, as it is the case for Aaron, have been riding the team pursuit today. They've had two races already. It certainly hurts the legs, but there are so many within this field that have been in the same situation. But Aaron Gate, one of the pre-race favourites, eliminated. Slovakia, Pavel Rovda. See the desperation out of the saddle around the final bend, trying to get some speed to keep himself in the race, but too little too late. Matias once again at the back. And you can see right down the very bottom there that riders are boxed in with nowhere to go. He knows he doesn't have to do too much up around the outside, so he stays in. And it's Chalel. So smart there from Matias. He didn't have to put in too much energy. You could see that Chalel was really boxed in down the bottom with nowhere to go and only had to make sure he could cruise across the line in front of him. Does cost himself a lot of energy and he goes down underneath now. So that's really dangerous though for Matias from Portugal this time. Gaps opened up. If they can all come up over around the outside. He still might be in danger, but he stays once more. Maldonado from Mexico. Well, J.O. of Matias from Portugal certainly has been entertaining. He likes that back position. Dicing with elimination so many times. And again, on the outside, you can see two riders underneath, and he'll just force them down a little bit to box them in. And it might be the Ukrainian rider at the bottom. It is Ukraine. Kabashny. With no room to move. And the danger of being down the bottom on the inside, well demonstrated there. Kabashny still had plenty of legs, but just with no room to use them. Kolkas now trying to put one over Matias and box him in, and he will be the one eliminated this time. 43, Portugal. Got a little bit of his own medicine for that one from uh, Kolkas from Austria. Graham Frisley in a dangerous position now. So Rafael Kolkas in second last position. Frisley, the Australian, trying to keep himself in the race. And he's just noticed that he had Vonez underneath him and has decided to go the boxing manoeuvre and it works for him. He stays in the race and it's perhaps Kuntz. It is Kuntz. Grant Kuntz from the USA. So Vonez must have felt he was in a bit of danger there for Checha. Grant Kuntz was the rider with nowhere to go. William Perrett, haven't said much about him, but he's been on the front a lot. So rider from Great Britain riding really strong in this elimination race. As we look once more back to the rear of the peloton, Kokas does enough or does he? That was really tight. Rider number five. Rider five. Rider number five. 
Rafael Kokas it was. So Kokas. You can hear that the names that we call out often that are dicing at the back and having to sprint multiple times eventually, more often than not, that does come back to bite them. All of that wasted energy every two laps. Juanes versus Scartazzini. Ooh. And Martorell from Spain right down the bottom. So Eric Martorell, Haga. He's a strong rider. He'd be disappointed with that. But once again, boxed in there on the bottom. Scartazzini in a dangerous position now underneath for Italy. He senses it. Look at Graham Frizzley just making sure he's overlapping the wheel, blocking Scartazzini from moving outside. Vonez also helping to make sure he puts the Italian out. And Scartazzini, Michele Scartazzini, he's gone. Seven riders remain. This is the men's elimination here on the first night of competition at the UCI Track Nations Cup, presented by Tissot Timing. Again, Perrett on the front looking so strong. Vonez from Checha up against Frizzly from Australia. And it will be Jan Vonez to go. Down to six. Noah Wolf from Denmark in the dangerous position. Frizzly in front of him. Wolf moved early and Frizzly had to fight hard to get himself out of being boxed in there. And that has put the young Danish rider out of the race. Almost caught sleeping there, Graham Frizzly. Big effort. You can see the shoulders pushing the pedals around that time to accelerate and keep himself in the race. Imamura comes to the front. That gives William Perrett at least a moment to sit on a wheel. He hasn't done that too much in this race here tonight. Frizzly up around the outside. Jules Hester's from Belgium trying to fight him off and a real squeeze between these three riders. This is going to be really tight between them as they come down and it is the rider from Switzerland. Fitztum. Simon Fitztum from Switzerland. That was a great battle, though, between those three. And Frizzly, smart move after a big battle to get over the top of these riders. It's always hard going from the front, but you don't want to fight the way he did in that previous elimination too many times. Imamura doesn't look like he has the legs to come over the top of Hester's. And the Bridgestone rider, Shansuki Imamura, is gone. Down to three. These are our medalists here tonight in the men's elimination. William Perrett has been super strong throughout this race. Now it's much more of a man-on-man -man sprint battle as Perrett goes to the front. Frisley tries to come up over the top of Jules Hester's. And that didn't quite work. Perrett still got the legs to keep the speed up. Hester's in a fantastic position here in second position. Big effort from Frizzly now to try and come over the top and stay in this race, but it will be the bronze medal for him. So Graham Frizzly, the Frizz, comes away with the bronze medal, and we are down to two. The final bell is about to sound. And perhaps the two strongest riders in this elimination are left racing. It's been a smart battle between them. Hester's from Belgium. And look at the strength of Perrot. He's been on the front so much throughout this race. And again, it's going to be a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder arm wrestle around the final bend between these two. Hester's thought for a moment he might win this. But no, thank you, said William Perrot. He gets the gold medal. What a strong and impressive ride from Will Perrot. Wow, that was so strong to fight Hester's off on the inside on that final lap. He was on the front so often throughout that race, costing a lot of energy, but still had the strength to claim the gold. Brilliant performance for William Perrett.
was a Great Britain on the front for most of the race and when it was most important coming into that final finishing straight. Hester's would have been hopeful at that point. Shoulder just in front of Perrot. But the extra strength of the man from Great Britain gets himself a gold medal here. A big smile on the dial for William Perrot. That was strong. Oh, fantastic race that. Men's team sprint first round is coming up next. There's the confirmation, the men's elimination with Will Parrott getting the win over Hesters and Graham Frisley for Australia taking the bronze medal. Parrott and Hesters, two riders we didn't see very often fighting in those elimination laps. Strong enough to be at the front for most of the race as we go further down the list. 20th place for the second of the riders from Japan, Kuboki. Kusuma from India, the first rider to have been eliminated. Men's team sprint, first round. Four heats, two teams against each other. We'll see China A versus Germany, then it's France versus China B, then Japan up against Great Britain in the third heat. And the fourth heat, Australia versus Chechia. The team that is not racing tonight is the Netherlands, the world champions I mentioned at the top of the show. They finished ninth in the qualifying this afternoon. They gave Harry Lebrezen, their superstar, a rest in the qualifying, and it cost them dearly. Only finishing in ninth place, not going into the first round. So a big upset if you're a supporter of the all-conquering team sprint team from the Netherlands. So for now, it's an opportunity for the rest, though. China A up against Germany, as it was in the women's team sprint. The fastest two winning teams will go into the race for gold and silver, and then third and fourth fastest winning teams will race for the bronze medal. Lucas Spiegel. Nick Schroter and Max Dornbach from Germany up against Zhao Shuai, Shu Yu and Li Qi for China A. Good depth of sprinters for China with two teams, China A and China B. China B up against France in the next one. Heat one, men's team sprint, first round. And a false start. Just admiring the explosive power of the fastest sprinters on the planet as they went out of the start gate. Unfortunately, one of these teams went a little bit too fast. And focus on Team Germany, position number three, Dornbach at the top of the track. Former time trial world champion Michael Rogers in the foreground there. He's the man from the UCI, Michael Rogers, that in more recent time has been in charge with just monitoring all the innovations that are coming in with cycling and just making sure that we're keeping the sport as fair as possible and, of course, as safe as possible. Always looking at uh, the cutting edge things the teams are all bringing out. And just checking to make sure that the rules and regulations keep the sport obtainable and, in particular, safe. A lot of discussion about handlebars, handlebar width, and then the position of hands on the bars. We see in the men's endurance events, you have those little extensions on the bars for the riders to get into a more aerodynamic position. A lot of talk about whether that will be allowed after we go through this Olympic cycle. 2025, look out for some perhaps some changes to those handlebar regulations, in particular for the endurance events on the velodrome.
Just cleaning the dust off the tyres. Not that it's very dusty in here. It's a pristine velodrome here in Hong Kong. So once again, with a false start, if there is a false start now in this restart, the team will be eliminated. Jan van Eyden on the left, former world champion in the Kirin. It's now, after spending a long time coaching Great Britain, back in his home country of Germany. Huge asset for the Germans to have Jan van Eyden back with them. Gao, Zhu and Li up against Spiegel, Schroter and Dornbach. China A versus Germany. China A faster than Germany in qualifying, but this is all about the win here in the first round to give yourself a chance to go into the medals. China A, just off camera, but they were slapping and punching and yelling and really getting themselves psyched up for this race. China A versus Germany, men's team sprint. It's the first round, heat one. And a clean start this time by both teams. Really powerful. China A versus Germany. China faster in qualifying between these two teams in a game 0.4 of a second up after the first half lap. So Germany with it all to do. And 17.3. That's really fast for a first lap. So China doing everything they can to keep themselves in the hunt for the medals here. Germany with a bit of work to do. Half a second down as they come down to complete their second lap. And it's the third rider now onto the track. 0.6 of a second for Dornbach to overcome. Liu is flying around this velodrome here in Hong Kong. That's a margin that you're not going to be able to go overcome in the final lap of a team sprint. So China A get the win, 43.104. Average speed of almost 63 kilometers per hour from a standing start over three laps. That is extraordinary. So China A get the win and they will be racing for the medals. They now have to wait to see from the next teams to come if their time will be putting them in the race for gold and silver or whether they will be racing for bronze. Qualified for the medal round. A good ride there for China A. See how that time of 43-1 compares to China B, who are coming up next. They'll be racing against France. China B with Jin, Li and Zhu. And for France, it's Landonneau, Vigier and Helal. Riders that are fully focused on the home Olympic Games this year. Such a big season for all of the cyclists that are looking at Olympic Games. But to be a home, a home Games, it's, it's extra special for the French. Halal Vigier. Oh, and Grenbo. Change from what I have here on my start list. Florian Grenbo, it is. Florian replacing Melvin. Heat number two, men's team sprint, first round, France versus China B. France were the quicker team in the qualifying round. 
this is the second team for China. But it is showing that they have some great depth very close between the two first riders here. As they finish their first lap, it's China with a very narrow margin over the top. So this could be a big upset, China B versus France. Still maintaining a very slight advantage. Now France have come back a little bit. So China B with a fantastic first two laps, but France coming from behind, going out further now. So they are riding away with this one. They will come through to complete the distance with the win, 43.05. So a comeback win there for France and an issue with a broken chain. Wow, that's extraordinary. I can tell you, it's very unnerving knowing that these bikes do not have brakes. And when the chain is fixed to the bike, at least you can slow the thing down. But when it breaks, you feel completely helpless. You can't stop. You're going too fast to, uh, to reach out and grab anyone. So they'll just let him roll around for as long as he needs to before his coach or a trainer can at least reach out and grab him. No, the chain is still there. It's just come off. Well, that's extraordinary. OK, so at least he completed the distance when he threw to the line at the end. I guess that's where the chain has then flicked off. So at least he was able to complete the distance and get the win for France. So they are guaranteed now a race for a medal. But an extraordinary situation there. I have not seen that happen for a very long time. Heat number three now. Japan versus Great Britain. Joseph Truman and Hayden Norris and their opponents in the home straight, the team of Japan. I can tell you that the French rider, Halal, has come off the track. So they have been able to catch him with the chain off the bike. So he's safe and sound. Nagasako, Ota and Obara for Japan, up against Fielding, Norris and Truman for Great Britain. Third heat, men's team sprint. Number three, men's team sprint underway, first round. Winner to go through to the next round. Japan the faster of these two teams in qualifying, but you never underestimate Great Britain. Good start from them, the first half lap. At the completion of the first lap, they are still in front. So great start for Great Britain. Doing great things, the British are. And now it's Japan that come back in front by 0.3. So the second rider for Japan. Kaya Ota doing an incredible job and Yuta Obara now finishing off. So 0.5 of a second up as they come to half a lap to go. So Japan really, once they got up to speed off the start, they have flown through this race. 42.9, the first team to go under 43 seconds. And Japan will go through to race for gold with only one heat still to come. But that's the fastest time we've seen. So that guarantees them a spot in the final. Really good first lap for Great Britain. Once they were up to speed, Japan, they just kept motoring. Nagasako, slower immediately out of the gate, but delivered Kaya Ota to a fantastic second lap, and that was finished off by Yuta Obara. 42.9 with 43.4 for Great Britain. And that's the second fastest, uh, sorry. Just looking at their time, Great Britain, compared to the other losing teams from the first rides. And that's the second fastest of the losing squads. So a bit of room to improve there for Great Britain. Heat number four, the final heat in the first round of the men's team sprint, Australia versus Chechia. And Chechia, we're expecting to not be in this race because they were sitting in eighth fastest in qualifying. 
with the Netherlands coming up onto the track to do their qualifying, who then finished ninth. And Cheche going one better than the Netherlands, and that's seen them survive and go into the first round. So Lee Hoffman, Matthew Richardson, and Matthew Glatzer for Australia, the world champions two years ago, silver medalist last year, up against Machi Bushlevek, Dominic Tombinka, and Martin Chechman. False start. Yeah. Another false start. Seeing Visually, lots of false starts here in the first day straight, of the racing the Track Nations so Cup we'll in these team sprints. The Checha in the back straight. Second wheel. Yeah, position number two, slightly too early. Nervous riders up against the former world champions for Checha, Australia. The world champs in 2022, silver last year to the Netherlands at the World Championships in Glasgow. It's certainly setting up a fantastic battle as we head towards the Paris Olympic Games. Lee Hoffman, incredibly fast out of the start gate. His opening lap has been consistently the quickest in the world. Matthew Richardson, position number two, and Matthew Glatzer. Usually a shout out to Tom Cornish, because these early rounds, especially the qualifying, Tom Cornish has been the rider in position number three, and then they bring Matthew Glatzer in for the final two rounds, if not just the final itself. And Tom not doing the team sprints here at the Track Nations Cup as yet. Wait to see if, I haven't seen him if he's here or not. May not be, but uh, they might pull him out for the final. We'll wait and see. But Matthew Glatzer doing the qualifying. He hasn't done that for quite some time with the uh, ability of Tom Cornish such that they haven't needed to use Matt Glatzer in the early qualifying rounds in the last couple of years. The home straight team of Australia, Lee Hoffman, Matthew Richardson and Tom Cornish. Aussie flag. Good to see the Australian support for the Australians. They were the fastest in qualifying. They would be full of confidence coming into this fourth heat in the first round of the men's team sprint, that they have the ability to get over the top of Checha and go into the finals, but they want to perfect their ride every time and improve. So we'll see what they can do. Hoffman, Richardson and Glatzer for Australia. Bushlevek, Topinka and Chechman for Checha. Final 10 seconds. Looking at the fourth and final heat in the first round of the men's team sprint. Away, and no false no starts this time, so the race is underway. Track. It's the final Australia race, the final the chance to see the what the Australians Australia. in particular can put Lee together Hoffman here as the fastest qualifiers up against the eighth the fastest in Checha. Checha also looking to improve on their previous ride. Great start again, 17.3 opening lap there for Hoffman. This morning, well ahead Topinka versus Richardson. And now Matthew Glatzer getting a run at the back of Matthew Richardson as they make the change over. And almost a second the difference between these two teams onto the final lap. And Chechman for Chechia trying to get a personal best at least up against Australia. And Matthew Glatzer comes through to finish things off. And I was Richardson actually they had uh, in third position there. Or, and they will meet Japan in the ride-off for the gold medal. 
and China A will meet France. So a comfortable win there for Australia, 42.717. So they are the fastest team here in the first round of the men's sprint. And as I looked at it, because my start list, I must apologise, my start list has Matthew Glatzer, but and I looked onto the track and I thought, that's not big, Matthew. It was Tom Cornish, as I was talking about Tom. Normally riding the qualifying and then uh, having to swap with Glatzer. They've done it the other way around. So Glatzer doing the first round, well, the qualifying, and then for the first round, Tom Cornish coming in to finish things off for Australia. Each of the national teams heading to the Olympic Games only allowed to have three riders for the team sprint. A lot of these countries using four riders, as I mentioned with the Australians, swapping Glatzer and Cornish. But when they get to Paris, the rider allocation is only allowing for three riders. So big decisions to be made with a lot of these teams. And the Australians, certainly, in particular, between Matthew Glatzer and Tom Cornish who will be their third rider, knowing that you've also got the Kieran and the Sprint competition for those riders to compete in. Women's team pursuit finals now. Japan versus Australia. Japan, Akita, Kajihara, Kakita and Uchino up against the Australians. Will, Carter, Edwards and Wilson Haffenden. So two 18-year-olds with the Australian team, Inkira Will and Felicity Wilson Haffenden. So the two youngsters stepping in. Unfortunately, yesterday, Chloe Moran, who's one of the stronger riders in this team, did have a crash in training. So just precautionary, they've decided to rest her after that crash. And that's giving an opportunity to a couple of extra younger riders to step in. This is the race for bronze. Women's team pursuit. Japan versus Australia. Japan the faster of these teams in qualifying. Let's see if the Australians can step up. Underway, 16 laps of the track. Actually, it was the other way around. Um, this, the um, sorry, in the qualifying, it was Australia that was faster, but then Japan in the next round were able to go a bit quicker again than Australia. And the Japanese team, both men's and women's team pursuits, have really stepped up in the last 18 months or so. We know the depth of talent Japan possess in the sprint disciplines. So really good to see them stepping up as well in terms of the endurance events like the team pursuit. Australia though with a quick start, half a second up just to get things going. First kilometer about to be completed Australia will get to the first kilometer just ahead of Japan 109.4 and at three tenths of a second now Japan just starting to get themselves up to full speed and it's coming back ever so slightly just under two tenths now Japan starting to hunt down the Australians Nothing between the two now as they go through. Australia were just getting pulled in. And the change, I thought it may have happened that time, still but it, the Japan the team from Japan still just a little bit behind. We'll get another indication once we get to the halfway point. And still, so Australia really doing well here to hold on. Coach Tim Decker in the back straight, just letting his riders know exactly where they sit against the Japanese team. And now it goes the other way. So the pendulum has swung in the favour of Japan. Point one of a second. 
Australia down to three riders now. Sally Carter, Western Australian, is the rider that has swung off the track. And that has left Kira Will, Sophie Edwards and Felicity Wilson Heffenden to do it all. 0.7 of a second now. The gap really starting to go in the favour of Japan. Still with four riders as well. Sophie Edwards driving it for the Australians. And it's come back a little bit. So the power of Edwards... The older of the riders in this young squad for the Australians doing everything she can to try and keep themselves in contention for this bronze medal. Five laps to go. 0.8 of a second. It's the biggest margin that we've seen. Oh, it's come back a little bit. So the Aussies have started to lift. And it's the youngster, Wilson Heffenden, that is really doing something special here. 18-year-old Tasmanian has brought them back to 0.5 of a second now. So this is a real race and a comeback here from the young team from Australia up against Japan. Uh, just as I say that, Wilson Haffenden swings off and the gap opens up a little bit. Japan now down to three. So both teams with three riders and they'll be coming around to get two laps to go. And the gap now out to just over one second and into the final 500 metres. Oh, interesting change there from the Japanese rider. They're so used to swinging for three riders. And then without only swinging to go down into third position, it's... Something they don't train that often for. And into the final lap now, and it's just under one second. But Japan have done everything they need to to get this bronze medal here. Australia put up a really good fight with a young team, but the Japanese squad, they will get the bronze medal here in Hong Kong. 417.9. And a good fight back there from the young Australian team. But Japan, the Asian champions, come on top. Bronze medal for them in the women's team pursuit. So a good battle in the end. And some impressive performances from young riders that we're seeing here on this first day in Hong Kong, China. New Zealand are up against Ireland in the race for gold. As we look back on how the Japanese team claimed their bronze medal here on the first day of competition. The Asian Continental Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the double L5 the women's team pursuit final. Race for gold now, New Zealand versus Ireland. And New Zealand, silver medal at the World Championships last year. And they have ridden the fastest time of everyone so far here today in the first day. Brony Botha, Emily Shearman. Samantha Donnelly and Nicole Shields of the New Zealand team. 4.13 in the first round. And Ireland with a 4.15. So they have two seconds to play with here, New Zealand, if they can continue to back up. The Irish team, Lara Gillespie, Mia Griffin, Kelly Murphy and Alice Sharp. And the Irish team did stay in Australia after the Adelaide Track Nations Cup. And they did compete in the Australian Track Championships only a couple of weeks ago in Brisbane. So they stayed in the sun of Australia, the warmth. So they were very well prepared and trained before they came here to Hong Kong off the back of that first Track Nations Cup. New Zealand, though, the silver medalists from the World Championships. They have the credentials. Women's Team Pursuit final, the race for gold is on the way. 
bronze medalist in the world, the European Championships a couple of years ago. Ireland up against the silver medalist at the World Championships last year in New Zealand. Two seconds is the difference between these two squads from the previous round. Both teams improving from their qualifying times. New Zealand with a 4.17, Ireland a 4.20 in qualifying, and then they went to 4.13 and a 4.17 for Ireland. 4.13 for New Zealand. Massive improvement from their qualifying. Only just doing what they need to. The benefit of being the last team to qualify means you can just gauge your performance to what has already happened preceding. Good start, though, for New Zealand. 0.8 of a second up on Ireland. That's what you would expect from this formation. They are so well trained, so well performed in recent time. And there's already, though, down to three riders. That's the tactics. First four laps of the race. Nicole Shields, that was. And did the opening kilometre. Zealand just over one second up on Ireland but it's three versus four one point four now Almost out to two seconds. That was the margin that was the difference between them from the first round. And we've seen New Zealand so comfortably back up on big performances previously. So even though they're down to three riders, you did still expect them to put in a pretty good time here tonight. And again, whoa, they're not a very good change though there from the third rider from New Zealand. A little bit of extra work to do to close that gap down and she's been able to do it. It is an unfortunate waste of energy though. would be able to, out of their peripheral, start to see the Irish team on the other side of the track now with a gap at 2.8 seconds. Not quite in the same straight, almost are now. So the gap really opening up three seconds. So just as I say it, they are just entering the same straight as the Irish as they go out around the bends. So this is a comfortable margin now for New Zealand. Four seconds, it's all about what time they can do. Of course, the big goal is Paris later in this season, and they want to keep improving. They know that Great Britain are not racing this nation's cup, and they are the favourites for the gold medal at the Olympic Games, perhaps. New Zealand want to do something special to steal that away from them. And we're going to be very close to a catch here. Three laps to go, and they're not too far away from catching the Irish team. 5.5 seconds, 5.6 seconds is the gap, and you can see visibly just about to get to the back of the Irish team. So really commanding performance here from New Zealand. Two laps to go, and they are about to catch their opponents in the race for gold here. Time becomes irrelevant unless they do want to continue on just to see how they're travelling, but this is where it gets dangerous. And the Irish rider swings up. And fortunately, no issues. And that's it. That's the catch. So New Zealand claimed the gold medal here. Nervous moment as they got to the back of the Irish team. And they have continued on, Ireland, not quite realising that they were about to get caught or had been caught. But the gold medal going to New Zealand, catching the Irish team inside the final two laps. So we won't get uh, an indication of what time the New Zealanders would have ridden had they continued, but they will know. They'll know what their time splits were, so they'll, they'll have a good idea from their coaching staff as to what time they were on and what they think they probably would have come to the finish line with. And I'm pretty sure they would have been quite happy with it. So a gold medal to New Zealand over the top of Ireland. Another good solid performance there for Ireland at the elite level. But the strength, the depth in the New Zealand team, so difficult to try and overcome.
No, they've given 413.9 as they got to the line just as they'd caught Ireland. But there was a slightly tricky moment in that. So they could have been a little bit quicker than that had they fanned out correctly and come across the line and really fought for that final spot to the line. Regardless, it's a gold medal to New Zealand. Silver goes to Ireland. And Japan with a bronze over the top of Australia. So great result from those four squads with China A and B showing that they really do have the depth to take on the world in the team pursuit. And Italy, Mexico, seventh and eighth. And the team that are the defending Olympic champions, Germany, down in ninth. Of course, they have had a complete change of their squad since the Tokyo Olympic Games. There's the winners, the gold medalists. Track Nations Cup here in Hong Kong, China. And the women's team pursuit gold medal going to New Zealand. Full of confidence for the remainder of the season and the big prize, of course, as we go towards the end of July into August with the Paris Olympic Games. Good audience for the first night of comp here. And we are expecting a big audience over the next two days as we finish up on Sunday. Already we've had some fantastic racing here on the opening day with the qualifying in the afternoon. Some good performances that have led into this first evening session and the first medals that have been won. We will be able to have a look back at just how the uh, first part of the competition has gone. And we did have the youth competition as well. So they've been able in the afternoon program and at the end, start of the evening session, the uh, young riders from Hong Kong were able to come out and share the same boards and have some racing. Of course, all of our top stars started this way as kids racing against each other. And it's always good to see the next generation. You never know which one of these riders may go on to be a world champion. And if not, it's just great that they're in the sport and enjoying it. If you've never ridden a velodrome, you should really seek out the opportunity to do so. It is a fun experience. And not that close at the end on the final lap between the riders. A big difference in ability. So it was great to see the youth out on the track this afternoon. And this is the presentation for that youth event from this afternoon. We did have a couple of for the men, the boys and the girls. So the presentation now for the youth event for the girls this afternoon. And bronze medal, that went to Wing Chi Ho. Ho Wing Chi. So I got the pronunciation around the wrong way. Supernova on the jersey. Super performance. And so good to have the presentation during the evening program. It must be so special for these young riders. Chung Sin Tung with the silver medal. And sporting that lovely red aerodynamic helmet to get her the win. Of course, it was the superior legs and strength and speed that she has. Lo Ching Kyu with a big step onto the top step of the podium there. Mr. Albert Lee, Vice Chairman of the Cycling Association, 
What an opportunity for these young riders, not just to race during the program here at a Nations Cup, but also to have a presentation. You never know where inspiration can come from, but the opportunity that they are getting here must be such an inspiring situation for them to keep continuing and keep fighting to be the best they can be in this sport. It's a wonderful sport to be involved in. Some names and faces to remember for Hong Kong cycling in the future. It wasn't that long ago, 2017, the World Championships were here at this velodrome. Good chance it may come back in the future and we could be looking at these riders representing Hong Kong. I'm sensing a little bit of nervousness on the faces, not quite sure what to do, but great photo opportunity for them. Nice so the women's youth race from this afternoon, presentation done. And this was the start list for the nice youth men. 17 riders on their start list. So a bigger bunch, a little bit more going on within the, the young men. You can see, bunched up. 40 laps of the race, long way for them. 10 kilometres of racing they did have this afternoon. So again, great opportunity to not just come out and have a race, but a really decent race in terms of length. Lots of good equipment out there as well. Disc wheels represented in the aero helmets. So well catered for, great equipment, even though they're very young, into the final couple of laps. And look at the last lap, really strung out. And Lee Wan Chun continually to look over his shoulder all the way through the final lap, but had the power, the speed. What a finish it was. So that's how the race was won. That was the results. And let's have a go at the presentations for the youth men. Here they are. So there's our fastest man from the scratch race, Lee Wan Chun, in the middle position. Uh, taking the bronze medal was Pang Ching Chi. Yuan Tin Long, the silver medal. Such young faces. And Lee Wan Chun with that final dash on the final lap to come away with the gold medal. unique opportunity for all these young riders. As I say though, they were very well decked out with equipment. It's not their first rodeo, that's for sure. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they progress over the next couple of seasons as they mature. Lee Wan Chan with the gold medal, Yuan Tin Long silver and Pang Ching Chai the bronze medal. That was the youth men's scratch race. As I said, 13, uh, 17 riders in the men's race for the lads.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2024 TISO Youth Evaluation Cup in Hong Kong, China. And for the elite riders, though, presentation time now for the men's elimination race. And what a fantastic battle this was, right down to that last half lap. The two riders that I mentioned the least ended up in first and second positions. That's how strong they were, staying at the front of the peloton. And making sure they were well out of elimination danger throughout the race, right down to the final event. <laughs> Young Australian Graham Frizzley with the bronze medal had to fight to stave off elimination a few times before he got down to the final three. Born in Montana in the United States. So aptly nicknamed Grizzly Frizzly, or the Frizz. And the silver medal going to Jules Hesters from Belgium. Got his shoulders in front of William Perrett. But Will, too strong in the end. So gold medal going to William Perrett for Great Britain. Men's elimination. Cannot stress it enough, that was an impressive ride from William Perrett. Spent so much of the race at or on the front and then still had the legs in the end to hold off Jules Hesters for the gold medal. Very strong ride by all three riders, but it was Perrett with the most convincing ride of all. Three presentations to get things underway. The two youth and then the one elite. And now we'll be back into the racing. Representatives, representatives of the French national team. Women's team sprint finals are coming up next. Then it's into the Vic, well, at the. Ah, we are going to hear though from uh, our from our new elimination champion, William Perrett. Oh, it's a great feeling. Um, you know, coming out here, it's a long way to come from the UK, and it's always hard hard racing here at a Nations Cup, and. Yeah, like those strong riders, but to win it always feels great. Um, well, uh, I, I would say there's there's plenty of key factors, but I think um, riding efficiently in the bunch, and then at the end it's just about having the legs and a lot of guys, uh, like the Japanese guy, like hit the front really hard, and it's about just make, putting yourself in the right position and slowly just always keep, you know, keep going, keep going. And uh, almost at the end then, Jules, the Belgian, he almost got over the top of me, but I kept my like foot to the floor and thankfully held him off. So it was nice, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. What a ride, William Perrett. Women's team sprint finals coming up now. Race for bronze between China and the Netherlands. And 
And then the gold medal matchup between Great Britain and Germany, the current world champions. But Great Britain, they are the team on form. Huan Lin Ling Ling, Gao Yongfang, and Bao Xinju up against Van der Piet, Lamberink, and Van der Waal from the Netherlands. This is the race for bronze. Women's team sprint bronze medal race is underway. China versus the Netherlands. China the faster of these coming through the rounds, but you have to put it together in the final. No mistakes. The margin of error in a team, team sprint is so small. And the third rider there from China just a little bit off the wheel as they make their changeover. But look at the gap. Over a second opened up over the first lap of this race. That's an extraordinarily fast start for China. It's going to be tough for the Netherlands to come back from here. Here. They've brought it back under one second into the last lap now, and it's down to point six. So the Netherlands are coming. It's the final rider head to head as they go down the back straight, down to point four. So this is a fantastic comeback for the Netherlands. Can they get the better of China? No, they cannot. China will hold on to the bronze medal. So good fight back from Netherlands to finish only point four of a second off the winning time. They were just over a second at the end of the second lap, or halfway through, I should say. So a great ride there for China to hold on to get bronze. Women's team sprint and a bronze medal going to China, but a good fight back from the Netherlands. What a start for China, that first lap. So explosive. 46.7 versus 47.1. So the Netherlands will get some confidence from that. That was a really good fight back from them. Race for gold now. Great Britain versus Germany. Emma Fanuken, Katie Marchant, and Sophie Capewell up against Leah Friedrich, Paulina Grabosch, and Emma Hinzer, current world champions, but it's the British team that are on form. They have been significantly faster in the first two rounds. But the world champions with those beautiful rainbow bands, can that lift them to get the win here in Hong Kong, China? Emma Fanuken has the fastest 200 meter time in the world at sea level. So she really has come on a world champion in the sprint and now an integral member of the Great British Team Sprint team. The world champions in the back straight versus the faster British team in the early rounds in the home straight. Fanukan Marchant, Capewell versus Friedrich, Grabosch and Hinza. Race for gold, women's team sprint final. Great start from both teams. Good formation there for Great Britain. Likewise, Germany, both teams have done this so many times before. And it's Britain with a narrow margin in front as they complete the first lap and they've opened that up a little bit more, 0.1 of a second. So great start for Great Britain, 18.7 for the opening lap. And now it's Emma Hinzer, multiple world champion in the past in the individual and team sprint events. And she has been able to maintain that gap at 0.1 of a second. Friedrich now down the back straight. And they're starting to come back. Germany have got themselves into the lead here. And Great Britain have a little bit of work to try and do. And they do it indeed, 0.2 of a second. So it's seesawed in the middle, but Great Britain came on top at the very end when it counted. Gold goes to Britain. Well, great battle between these two. They'll take this all the way to Paris later this year. Germany have narrowed the margin compared to the earlier rounds. So they have improved from their first rounds. But Great Britain, they don't have to win by much. They just want to win, and that's what they did. So they claim the gold here in Hong Kong.
So slight improvement yet again over the previous round for Great Britain in terms of overall time. And that has given them the gold medal over Germany and China with bronze. Netherlands, Poland, New Zealand down in sixth. France in seventh, so some valuable points for France who are right at down the bottom of the overall points tally in terms of Olympic quota qualifying. And 11th place, Hong Kong, China on their home track. Crowd certainly enjoying the racing here in Hong Kong. World-class riders on a world-class velodrome. And look at that, a world-class performance. With Paulina Grabosch, the world champion, in the background. And they had some big disappointment at the opening round of the Track Nations Cup in Adelaide. Getting relegated in the qualifying. Full of confidence, though, Great Britain. I think the Germans will be inspired by this performance. They'll want to come back and try and rectify things at the Olympic Games. But for now, the confidence, it's all with Great Britain, the momentum with the British team. We'll see if that continues all the way through to Paris. They have built such an impressive squad over the last 18 months in particular, Great Britain. Germany were the first and the best adapters when the race went from two riders to three. They were the early adapters and became multiple world champions. Great Britain now just seem to be getting their timing right in an Olympic year, right on the top. Podium getting ready now for the next presentation. It will be the women's team pursuit. Great performance by New Zealand to win the gold medal there. But yet again, a solid performance. Silver medal for Ireland. So that was a great result from them. They have had a bronze medal at the European Championships a couple of years ago. And I did also mention that they rode the Australian National Championships a couple of weeks ago and really dominant performance there. They claimed six medals at the Aussie Championships, multiple gold medals. So they enjoyed their time racing in Adelaide at the Track Nations Cup and then Brisbane at the Track National Championships. And also here in Hong Kong, China, silver medal to them. And you can see in the background, the Asian champions, Japan, with a bronze medal to them. And we'll see the men's team come up shortly for the men's team pursuit finals and the men's Japanese team did break their own national record earlier today 348 previous record 350 at the Track Nations Cup so they've already improved two seconds in the last month so they really are going in the right direction heading towards those Olympic Games it's a good result by both Japanese team pursuit squads women and men Men will be racing in the gold and silver medal final later tonight and the women about to claim a bronze medal for them quick shout out to the track endurance coach for japan daniel gissiger who's not here unfortunately he did have a crash a fallout on his road bike recently has broken some bones so speedy recovery to daniel gissiger former time trial expert on the road and Japanese track endurance coach. Big foreign outfit within the coaching staff of Japan. Australian Jason Niblett, also one of the coaches there, and the program head, uh, headed up by Benoit Vertu from France, so along with Daniel Gissinger, who is Swiss. It's a very international coaching staff for Japan but it's doing them wonders both team sprint individual sprint efforts and also now in these team pursuits the Japanese squad is doing amazing things
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2024 Tisa Lucio Education Cup in Hong Kong, China. Next medal ceremony, ceremony just about to get underway. This is the award ceremony of the women's team pursuit. Some very smiley New Zealanders there. Talk about the confidence booster for the Great Britain women's in the team sprint. Likewise here in these team pursuit events. So New Zealand getting the win, looking at the time they were riding. It's not a super fast track conditions here at the moment. So none of the timed events have been super quick. So they'll be happy with the gold medal and reasonably happy with their overall time from New Zealand. The so the bronze medal on the right hand side going to Japan. They are the Asian continental champions. Mizuki Ikida, Yumi Kachihara, Mayu Kakita, and Sayuka Uchino. I personally just flew in from Japan yesterday. Spent some time in Hokkaido, such a wonderful nation. Fantastic people. And the silver medal going to Ireland. Lara Gillespie, Mia Griffin, Kelly Murphy, and Alice Sharp. Another nation going in the right direction. Mentioned that European Championship bronze medal. And now. Nations Cup silver for them. So they're doing everything right. And great to see that they've been able to put together a real squad with some depth to continue to push each other and keep training hard. And these are the performance that come from that. So well done to the Irish track program. Likewise for New Zealand. It's nothing new for the New Zealanders, though. They've had such a strong track cycling program from a relatively small nation, five or six million people. Rugby is their dominant sport. Rowing also very popular, but cycling, they have done so well. Bryony Botha, Emily Shearman, Samantha Donnelly, and Nicole Shields. Gold medal for New Zealand in the team pursuit here in Hong Kong. The men's team pursuit finals will be up after this medal presentation. Then we'll have the next lot of victory ceremonies followed by the women's elimination race. We've seen the men's already and their presentation. And we'll see the women coming up tonight as well. Then it's the men's team sprint finals to finish things off. Ireland and Japan. Gold, silver and bronze. Women's team pursuit final here in Hong Kong, China. Second round of the UCI Track Nations Cup presented by Tissot. After this, a lot of the riders, not all, but a lot of the riders and some that are not here will be heading to Milton in Canada for the final round of the UCI Track Nations Cup series. The final opportunity to get their qualifying points for the Olympic Games. Thought the man on the right was falling asleep then, but no, he wasn't. 
it's fully attention. Top of the screen, Sam Lazel from the Cash Park Up team in Australia. Right on cue, staring at the camera now as well. Sam's Cache Park Group team is part of the National Road Series in Australia, but they also have registered a UCI track team as well, hoping to give some opportunity, like we see with the Bridgestone Japanese team, trying to give an opportunity for another group of riders from that nation to come and get uh, representation at this level of competition. Pursuit final now for the men. You can see the riders coming out onto the track. Race for the bronze medal. And it's a trans-Tasman affair. New Zealand versus Australia. We've seen this so many times, especially at Commonwealth Games level. And then Japan versus Denmark in the race for gold and silver. And again, fantastic to see Japan getting themselves into a gold medal final up against the world champions in Denmark. But for now, we focus on the race for bronze. New Zealand, Jackson, uh, George Jackson, Keegan Hornblow, Tom Sexton, Campbell Stewart. On the other side of the track, James Moriarty, Blake Agnoletto, Josh Duffy and Ollie Bledden, Australians. Oliver Bledden and Blake Agnoletto aside from this level of competition, had a big victory in the Bendigo Madison, which is one of Australia's biggest one-day track cycling events. Only last weekend, and Blake is from Bendigo, so hometown win for him. It was a really emotional affair. For now, it's back to team pursuit racing. Josh Duffy in the start blocks for Australia. Australia with a 3.51 in the first round. New Zealand 3.50.7. Only four, three tenths of a second between these two teams coming into this final. It is the third team pursuit of the day. Can you back it up? That's a big question. But some real bragging rights between these very strong yet friendly rivals. New Zealand slightly slower, just out of the start gate now got themselves just ahead of Australia. Still very, very early running here in this race for the bronze medal. Neither of these nations with their absolute top Olympic team configurations here on the track. So it's interesting to see with a few of their top stars not racing just how they can still perform. New Zealand at the moment, just that one tenth of a second advantage. And the first kilometre, 103 for both teams. And despite being the third race of the day, both of these squads would be desperately hoping to go under 350. Two teams were able to do that, and that were, they were the two teams that are going to be racing for gold and silver, Denmark and Japan, both riding 348 in the first round. These two squads, 350 and a 351. New Zealand on paper, slightly quicker, and they are ever so slightly in front in reality on the boards. Australia down to three. New Zealand still with four riders, though. Josh Duffy it is, the rider from Australia, that has done his job in position number one, got them up to go, and now 0.3 of a second is the difference they have to overcome. They've gone past the halfway point, and it's still close. New Zealand not riding away with this. Another tenth of a second going the favour of New Zealand. They'll 
come round, five laps to go, not quite into the final kilometre, and now it's three riders for New Zealand, so three versus three. 0.6 of a second is the difference. 0.7, so New Zealand just starting to get a bit of a stranglehold on this bronze medal. Big effort required from Australia to keep themselves in the hunt for this medal. Out to point seven. And fight back is perhaps not coming from the Aussies. The strength of depth in New Zealand now, point nine of a second. They bring it back to point eight, but it's still in the favor of the New Zealand team in the all black. And they'll come around for the final two laps now. Almost at one second is the margin. The final 500 metres in New Zealand look as if they are riding towards this bronze medal. The young Australian team are not going to go down without a fight though. Can both teams get themselves under the 350? That's something they'd really like to do. And they have kept it to within one second. Final lap now. Can they finish things off? New Zealand will claim the bronze medal here, but Australia trying to do their best performances on the boards as well. And it's a 351.6 for New Zealand. They claim the bronze, and the margin just goes over one second with Australia finishing in fourth. Tidy performance from both teams. And as I say, third race of the day, so difficult to improve on the time compared to their first round rides but both tidy and solid performances. And that bronze medal going to New Zealand. Bragging rights in the Trans-Tasman battle. Once again, going to New Zealand. Race for gold and silver coming up now. Denmark, the current world champions. They don't have all of their riders they used for the world championships here uh, on the track. But they do have a couple. They're up against Japan, the Asian champions that broke their national record earlier today. 348.1. And Denmark 348.4. So with the faster time in the first round for Japan, they are lining up in the home straight. And Denmark with their two world champion jerseys in the back straight. Frederick Madsen, Lasse Leth, Robin Skivold and Tobias Hansen. Support for Japan. This is going to be a very interesting battle. The race for gold now. Men's team pursuit is underway. And the faster of these two teams, surprisingly, knowing that the Danish team have been so strong as a force in team pursuit for so many years, they are the defending world champions. But Japan with Naoki Kojima, Aya Hashimoto, Koshuji Kaboki, and Shoi Matsuda doing their nation proud. National record this afternoon. And that has got them as the fastest qualifiers coming into this final. You can never underestimate Denmark, though. Such a well-trained team pursuit squad. Slightly faster start for Japan. Now Denmark out to point three of a second. And good first kilometre from these teams. 102.3 for Denmark. Fantastically fast first kilometre. And they are starting to get a bit of a stranglehold here. So this is a big margin. Knowing the Japanese team did break their national record, and we 
look back to the race for the bronze medal with both New Zealand and Australia going slower in the race for the medals compared to the first round. Big effort from Japan earlier this afternoon. Maybe it's a bit too much to see them be competitive here against Denmark. One and a half seconds now, the margin. As it approaches two seconds, the riders from Denmark will just start to see in their peripheral vision the team across the other side of the track. They'll also be getting an indication from their coach just where they are against their opponents. They'll be full of confidence now as both teams go down to three riders. Six laps to go, three riders each, and the advantage heavily favouring the current world champions. Oh, and a bad change from the third rider from Japan. That's going to hurt. A lot of wasted energy as he tries to get back into position. Very solid, though. Looking nice and smooth, though. Denmark and Japan back into tight configuration. But 3.5 seconds now, the margin. In the final kilometre now, and this is going all the way of the world champions from Denmark. Really putting in a solid performance here. They didn't go to Adelaide for the first Track Nations Cup. And it's all gone the wrong way for Japan. They have blown up all over the track here. This is really unfortunate for them. They've put in so many good rides earlier today. Silver medal will come their way, but the gold medal definitely is sailing the way of Denmark as the gap goes out to five seconds. And they'll come around to get the bell just as they catch the back of the Japanese team. So the race will be concluded as they catch their opponents. There's the signalling of the race being done. So with half a lap to go, three quarters of a lap to go, the race was over. And it's a gold medal going to the world champions of Denmark in the men's team pursuit. So a really solid performance from them. Incidentally, the individual uh, Japanese rider did continue on on his own as his two teammates were caught by Denmark. So at least you'll get a true indication of what the Japanese time could have been if they did stick together. But a really solid performance there from Denmark to win gold. Hansen, Skivild, Leth and Madsen. They got the job done. And this is the moment where the race was over and they caught the two runners from Japan. Gold medal going to Denmark, but that one rider from uh, Japan did continue on his own. But regardless, overlapped. So they have been caught. It is a pursuit race. That's what it's all about. It's not often in a final, though, you get to see the gold medalists catching the silver medalists. Regardless, it's been a big day for Japan. Silver and a bronze medal in the men's and women's team pursuits here in Hong Kong and a national record for the men with a 3.48. Super quick time. New Zealand getting the better of Australia for the bronze medal. And we saw Italy down there as well in sixth place. Only one of their riders from their gold medal winning Olympic team from Tokyo has been available for this week's competition. And it has become a bit of an issue for some of the nations that have really good road professionals within their team pursuit squads. Getting access to those riders throughout the season has been really difficult for them. I was talking to Marco Villa, the national coach of Italy. He said their women's team pursuit team will have their top riders for Milton in Canada. And they are still hopeful after the Giro d'Italia that they will have all of their riders available for the final training camps going into Paris. As we just saw the hugs of the winners from Denmark. Team sprint presentation now coming up onto the track. The 
another solid ride by China. They've been so consistent over the years in the women's sprint disciplines. And mixed emotions on the podium here. We can see the world champions perhaps expecting a little bit more out of this. That's what happens when you've been so good for so long. But the bronze medal in the women's team sprint going to China. Yuan Liling, Yao or Gao Yufang, and Bao Shanju. Silver medal going to the world champions, though, from Germany. Leah Sophie Frederick, Paulina Grabosch, and Emma Hinzer. They had a disastrous first round in Adelaide of the Track Nations Cup, so it's good for them to come back and get the job done. Silver medal for them. But the gold medal going to the team on form. Great Britain have been extraordinary in the last 12 months or so. Emma Finucane, Katie Marchant and Sophie Capewell. All three riders doing so well, but great to see Katie, the last to get her medal there. Back to top form. Sensational. Fanukan Marchant and Capewell. Gold medal in the women's team sprints. Great Britain. Hitting their straps just at the right time in an Olympic year. It's going to be a fascinating battle between these top teams throughout the rest of this season as we head towards the Olympic Games. Germany had a lot of confidence coming into this season, the world champions, but it's Great Britain that have really hit 2024 with the best form. Can they carry it all the way through to the Games or can Germany come back to challenge? Men's Team Pursuit Victory Ceremony will be up next. And then we'll go into the women's elimination race, then followed by the men's team sprint finals. But we will get to hear from Sophie Capewell before we get into the next presentation. Well, let's go down to the centre of the track now and hear from our new champion. We've put a lot of hard work in and we've been really consistent over the last few months. And uh, this is the last Nations Cup we're planning on coming to, so to win, that's like really special for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Short and sweet presentation, just like the race. That's how fast they are. They're not out there for that long. They don't mess around. Men's Team Pursuit Medal Ceremony now. The New Zealanders coming up. It was Campbell Stewart, Tom Sexton, Keegan Hornblow, and George Jackson. Bronze medal for New Zealand. And some 
Solid bragging rights over Australia in fourth place. The Silver Fern, New Zealand, with another international medal to their tally. Campbell Stewart on the right-hand side there. Professional road cyclist as well. So talking about that before, getting access to your best riders, if they are pros on the road, sometimes really challenging for the nations. Of course, it's the pro teams that are paying the salaries of these riders, and Campbell Stewart being a pro road rider, great that he's here. He was in Adelaide at the Track Nations Cup as well as now here in Hong Kong. So really good to see that uh, for the New Zealanders. Japan with the silver medal, they have stepped up dramatically. Naoki Kojima, Aya Hashimoto, Kashuji Kuboki, and Shoi Matsuda. A national record and a silver medal. Been a great first day. Although the grimace on the face there of Aya Hashimoto, just indicating the pain and the stress that they took through to get the silver medal here. Denmark once again on the top step of the podium. Two of their world champions. Frederick Madsen and Lasse Leth, formerly known as Lasse Norman Hansen, and then married Julie Leth, and then took her name instead of the more traditional or previously more traditional way. So a few of the Danish riders have done that in recent times. So well done to Lasse for taking his wife's surname, Lasse Lett, alongside Robin Skivild and Tobias Hansen. Denmark once again on the top step of a team pursuit presentation, Dias. New Zealand fourth at the last Olympic Games. Can they get themselves back onto an Olympic podium? In Japan, they are coming in a rush. Quite new to see them on a team pursuit international level competition podium. So great to see the Japanese team step up and claim a silver medal. That leaves us just with three races to come. The women's elimination final and then the two races for the medals in the men's team sprints. Denmark, Japan and New Zealand. Our medalists in the men's team pursuit here at the Track Nations Cup in Hong Kong, China. William Perrett from Great Britain got the gold medal in the men's elimination. Who will it be? in the women's race. Kira Will representing Australia, 18 year old. She's been riding in these team pursuits. So a big day for her here. Yumi Kajihara, we've just seen her come off the presentation dice as well for Japan in the team pursuit. But she's a really solid rider in these type of races. Maria Martins from Portugal. See Samantha Donnelly from New Zealand. So, so many of these riders, as we saw in the men's race, getting straight off the track from the team pursuits and then into the elimination. Tired legs, takes a lot of courage, a lot of grit and determination to back up again and chase a medal here in the elimination off the back of those team pursuit rounds. Thank you. 
Riders making their way around to come up onto the start line. Yareli Atovedo from Mexico, that was. Here's Donnelly from New Zealand. Sam Donnelly. Laura Rodriguez from Spain. Final drink. Anita Stenberg from uh, Norway, holding on to the high rails here in Hong Kong. I saw a glimpse of uh, Gabriela Bartova, there she is, from Checha. Good chance to get a close-up of some of the equipment the riders are using. We focus so much, and there's the Japanese bike that's developed for the Olympics this year with the super wide forks, the drive chain on the left-hand side, not on the traditional right-hand side. A lot of innov innovation on the uh, Japanese bike for the games this year. And we can see the Japanese bike just in the background there with the wide forks. We saw that first with the Hope Lotus bike from Great Britain and a few of the other nations, including Australia, with the Factor, new Factor bike with the wide front end. And the Japanese also doing the same. Just creating three aero foils at the front of the bike and also able to shape the wind light away from the legs, the wide forks at the front. So really important. Once again, as we saw in the men's race, every two laps, the last rider across the line will be eliminated. And it's a real mad dash to get into position in these first couple of laps. And the first elimination now underway. And right at the very back. We can see ooh, some twitches of the uh, riders as well, so really dangerous. Chino is the first rider to go for Japan. Sara Fiorin, Fiorin from Italy in the danger spot, but should be able to get up around the outside. Donnelly from New Zealand, though, is underneath her. So the downhill run, Sarah might be able to stay in. She's not going to be able to. So the Italian is the next one to go. Quite clear cut there, we see Sarah Führer in. Grove from South Africa in the danger zone now. Donnelly again from New Zealand, just in front of her. Crichton from Ireland down the bottom. If they get a run high on the track, Crichton could be in trouble. But it is the South African Grove is the third rider to go. Easy ones to call so far early on in this race. Donnelly from New Zealand goes right up around the outside this time. Kajihara also looking to do the same. And that has... Oh, down the bottom, Checha. Bartova, it is. Gabriela Bartova. Tavito from Mexico up around the outside. She should be okay from there. It's Van Bell. Lisa Van Bell from the Netherlands that dives through underneath. And it's Krum, Ida Krum from Denmark.
Metro from Switzerland now. Noticing she's at the back of the group. Look over the shoulder from her. She's backed out, giving herself some space to go up around the outside. And she'll get a good downhill run down the back straight. And that should keep her out of danger. Mizurina perhaps now in trouble. Out of the saddle from her. Driving as she goes up around the top. And Van Bell perhaps in trouble down the bottom. It is Netherlands. So Lisa Van Bell. So frustrating to be caught down the bottom. Fresh legs, feeling okay, but just with no room to go. Kira Will, the 18-year-old from Australia now, getting herself out of a dangerous position. Metro down at the bottom. Maria Martins, high up around the outside. So Martins should be okay. She is, and it's Metro perhaps from Switzerland. Two, four, six. Oh, New Zealand Donnelly. Oh, yep, you can see it there, just down underneath. So again, caught down the bottom with nowhere to go. Sam Donnelly out. Kajihara in a dangerous position there, but the crafty Japanese rider gets herself out of trouble and up around the outside. Mizurina from Uzbekistan is the rider eliminated. Lina Metro again underneath in a dangerous position. Crichton from Ireland high on the track. But right down the bottom, you don't want to be there. Zayed senses the danger. And now Kira Will trying to squeeze through right at the very bottom. Zayed from Egypt right up around the outside. So she should be OK. And Kozieva. Novosak Kozieva. They keep coming, these elimination laps. Every two laps of the track, it's so difficult to keep fighting for position. And Crichton, really high on the track. We look right down to the bottom. Dangerous position there for Metro. And it might be... Can she fight, squeeze through? She cannot. So Lena Metro from Switzerland. Wait for confirmation. It is her very close between three riders there, the back wheel across the line. And you can see the throw of the head then. She was really disappointed with being eliminated. Stenberg. Kira Will in front of her from Australia. Erin Crichton, second last position. Now here comes Anita Stenberg. Very strong up around the outside. Crichton is in danger. Is it down the bottom of the track? It is down the bottom. And Zayed is, is taken out right down the very bottom of the track. Solid ride, though, from the Egyptian. Rodriguez really fighting the bike up around the outside of Crichton from Ireland. Yumi Kajahara from Japan comfortably sitting on the front of the peloton. Now Crichton in a really dangerous position here. There's no room to accelerate. And that's why she's the rider that's eliminated this time. Sultanova comes to the front of the peloton. Yumi Kajahara from Japan, though, in the dangerous position. Olivia Balisaita high on the track. And riders getting squeezed in and out all around the place here. And it's Sultanova from Kazakhstan. So starting to really run out of legs now as well as you get deep into this elimination race with all of the efforts every two laps. Fatigue 
comes in very quickly. And ducking and diving, weaving all over the track. No one really wanting to go to the front. It's so much harder in that very first position. And high on the track with so many riders. This is unusual in an elimination final. Rodriguez takes up the challenge and goes to the front. And it's Kira Will that's on the wrong side of the wheel in last position. She squeezes through underneath and she will stay in the race. So tactically, good ride there from Kira Will. As Maria Martins from Portugal is eliminated. So Will goes to the front. She doesn't want to do that dive underneath too many times. It will get caught out at some point. Kajihara in last position now. In front of her, Stenberg moves up over the top of Kira Will. And again, she's in a dangerous position. The youngster from Australia caught on the inside. And you can see both Kajihara and Stenberg just riding to stop Kira Will from moving out. And I don't think the Australian will survive. Ooh, very tight with her and Rodriguez, though, at the bottom. On oh, Rodriguez, it is. So Laura Rodriguez from Spain. This will be tight right down the very bottom. There it is. The wheel pops out the back. Kira Will holds on for another one. Down to five. Kajihara, Stenberg, Balasaita, Will and Rodriguez. Olivia Balisaita, Kira Will needs to stay on the outside of the wheel in front to give herself some room to manoeuvre and not able to do it this time. It's been a solid ride from the 18-year-old. Kira Will is the fifth place getter here in the women's elimination. Down to four now. Olivia Balisaita comes up to the first position, but they're all very high on the track. Someone surely is going to dive down to make sure that they're in the front position. No, they're going to follow Lithuanian as they go down into the next elimination lap. And Stenberg now quickly up around the outside of Rodriguez. And once she gets there, she can back off a little bit. Just squeeze Rodriguez and she has to fight right back over the top. And she does get in there. So good fight back there from Rodriguez. Guarantees herself a medal as Olivia Belisaita will finish in fourth place. Down to three now, Stenberg, Kajihara, and Azevedo from Mexico. Bronze medal up for grabs here. Relia. Acevedo in third position. And look over the shoulder there from Kajihara. She knows that the Mexican rider is not going to be able to come past. So it's a bronze medal going to Mexico. Acevedo, solid ride to finish third. And now it's down to two. Anita Stenberg and Yumi Kajihara. Stenberg is strong. She has proven that time and time again. But Kajihara has some real punch. She has some great acceleration and into the final lap now and Kajihara really quick to come up over the outside. So Stenberg went in fairly slow and Kajihara has just powered past. So Yumi Kajihara will come away with the gold medal here in the women's elimination. Really solid final sprint there from Kajihara. Good win for Yumi Kachihara over Anita Stenberg and Yareli Achevedo from Mexico with bronze. What a great ride there. Real tactically brilliant ride from Yumi. Of course, you have to have the strength in the legs in the end. It's such a tough race. But just tactically, did everything right. Whenever she was in danger, she sensed it well in advance. So she could move up and out of the way, stave off elimination. And in the end, just too powerful, that final sprint. Comfortable win here for Yumi. Good ride, though, from Anita Stenberg. Really solid to get all the way through into second position. A lot of support here from the Japanese fans in the crowd. And that final sprint, Stenberg wasn't expecting Yumi to go so early into that final lap.
but she had the energy. Not a problem for Kajihara. So two races to come here, first night of competition. Track Nations Cup in Hong Kong, China, brought to you by Tissot. And it is the final of the men's team sprint. Another medal and a gold, in fact, for Japan. They have really developed into an incredibly strong track cycling nation. Kajihara over Stenberg and Achevedo. Gold, silver and bronze, Japan, Norway and Mexico. Top and tail for Japan, 20th and first in the race. Men's team sprint finals, the race for the bronze medal. France versus China A. Florian Grenbault, Sebastian Vigier and Rian Helal for France in the home straight. And China Ray in the back straight is Gao Shuai, Zhou Yu, and Liu Qi. Traditionally, the French super strong in the track sprint events have dropped off slightly in the men's discipline in the last couple of years. Can they start their fight back? France versus China A. This is the race for bronze. Penultimate race on the opening night of competition here in Hong Kong, China for the Track Nations Cup. And it's a really solid start from China. 0.2 of a second over France. We've seen the Chinese so fast on the first lap and they've opened it up to 0.3. So really solid. The second rider now doing their job. Can France bring it back? It's gone out to point four. So this is bucking the trend here. China A slower in the previous round, but they are doing a great job here. They're racing for the bronze medal, and it's a massive margin for France to overcome. They are bringing it back. Point three of a second into the final half lap now. France versus China A. And China A hold on. Bronze medal goes to them. 0.265 in the end was the margin. Good fight back from France, but it wasn't enough to get the better of China A. Fantastic start. That really did set China A up to come away with the bronze medal here. Of course, the riders have no idea of where the team on the other side of the track is. It is just a complete maximum effort from both nations. But certainly entertaining competition, really close between both races. <laughs> Looked like a normal sprint match there, France versus China. 42.795 versus 43.06. So good fight back from France, but China A doing everything they needed to. Opening lap, setting themselves up to a fantastic bronze medal for them. Now the race between Australia and Japan. This is a rematch from the Track Nations Cup in Adelaide a month ago. And the former world champions from two years ago, Australia. They got the win that time. And they are the faster of these two squads. Coming in, Tom Cornish, Matthew Richardson and Lee Hoffman. So there has been a change in formation in the way they've been doing the order. Matthew Glatzer did the opening round, then Cornish came in for the first round and now here in the final in the third wheel position. Hoffman, of course, the first lap rider for Australia with Matthew Richardson position number two. Yuta Obara, Kaya Ota and Yoshitaku Nagasato. Sato. Nagasato to do position number one for Japan, up against Lee Hoffman from Australia. Final race of the night. Opening day of competition here in Hong Kong, China. Australia versus Japan. Men's team sprint final. And powerful starts from both of these teams. Really solid, well-drilled units. The faster time is by Australia today, but can Japan do something? Well, they've done a great first half lap. Can they complete the lap as Hoffman comes through to swing off? 
and they've gone back in front. So Australia by point one of a second. Really good out of the starting gate for Japan, but Australia now up to top speed. Point two as they come to the interchange for position number two and three. And it goes out to point three of a second. Tom Cornish finishing off the job for here for Australia. They won in Adelaide a month ago. They won the World Championships two years ago, and they are sailing around to another gold medal. Team sprint gold for Australia, 42.274 and 0.6 of a second faster than the silver medalist Japan in the end. That was a solid performance by the Australians. Gold medal going to Australia. Great ride by Japan to finish in second. And China A coming away with bronze in the team sprint. And the, look at the form of these riders, so powerful. They are the fastest cyclists in the world, the track sprinters. You look at the Tour de France and the Mark Cavendishes being the fastest sprinters. Well, they're the fastest road sprinters. These are the quickest cyclists on the planet. And all that power going through the pedals, up to 2,500 watts. Extraordinarily powerful. So Australia with the gold medal here in the team sprint to finish off the first day of competition. Stick with us though, we do have the presentation ceremonies coming up for the races that we've just witnessed. But a good solid performance there from Australia to get the gold. Confirmation 42.2 versus 42.9. So a comfortable margin in the end, despite Japan just getting that better first half lap. Uh, and then Australia got themselves back in front off the back of Lee Hoffman's opening lap. And then opened up a massive winning margin in the end. Australia, Japan, China A, France rounding out the races for the medals, fourth place for them. China B showing China's depth in the team sprints and the sprint competition finishing in fifth position. Ukraine were the 13th team. Hong Kong, China, unfortunately not taking to the start line at the end. Two more big days of competition to come. And we can see already the presentation area is set up for the next presentation. If you, didn't, uh, if you weren't tuned in at the start of the competition, I can tell you that the Netherlands, the current World Team Sprint Champions, they are here, but they finished ninth in qualifying, didn't make it into the top eight to go into the first round. So that's why we didn't see them racing for the medals. Big upset, a lot of disappointment there for the current world champions making a mistake in that qualifying round and only being ninth fastest. They do have enough points to qualify the team for the Olympic Games. So in terms of points quotas for athletes and positions at the Games, not a problem for the team from the Netherlands. However, it was just so surprising to see the world champions down in ninth in qualifying. Track centre, always full with so many riders, teams and so many staff members for all of the nations, especially in an Olympic year where they really are putting all the resources towards the athletes. So a lot more staff members being on board to help out at these Track Nations Cups as they all develop and, perform and head towards the, the Olympic Games in Paris. Women's elimination race is the pres medal presentation ceremony that we are about to have. I can see from my position here, just on top of the finish line, that the riders are almost ready to be presented. Japan, Norway and Mexico coming out onto the presentation area now. So great to see just a real mix of all of the different nations and okay japan they've been in several presentations in the team sprints and and the team pursuits elimination now as well with yumi kachihara but for mexico this is the first time also norway today that we've seen them come up onto the medal presentations so great to see so many different nations in the mix
And there they are, led by Yareli Azevedo from Mexico. That's a big smile. She's very happy to be on the podium at a Track Nations Cup. She really did have to fight a couple of times to keep herself in that race and then all the way down to the top three positions. A great result there for Yareli. So the bronze medal going to Mexico. Yareli Acevedo Mendoza. And the silver going to Norway, Anita Stenberg. Solid ride there from Anita. But sheer brilliance from Yumi Kajihara. Really solid ride indeed from the Japanese star. We know they have sprint depth. That all comes from the Japanese professional Kirin series and the Kirin schools that developed so many solid sprinters. And that's why it's fantastic to see the depth that's coming now in the endurance field for Japan. Yumi Kajihara, Anita Stenberg, and Yareli Acevedo. Japan, Norway, and Mexico. Women's elimination. Fairly new to the World Championships. It's been around for three years now, the elimination. It's been in the Omnium as one of the disciplines for a lot longer. But as a standalone World Championships, we have had three editions. There was some real support for Yumi, especially after she got the win. The crowd, there was a large block of Japanese supporters here. So fantastic that she had the support here in the crowd. And we get to hear from y Yumi Kachihara now. How does that feel with the championship? Yeah, I'm so happy, but so hard today because uh, to, today is, uh, we ha I have uh, four, four days, so Chimpa shoot. So bronze, we have, we get uh, bronze medal. I'm so happy, <laughs> and uh, elimination race, so gold medal. I'm so so happy. <laughs> Thank you for uh, supporting my team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Two medals. It has been a big day doing the team pursuits, as most of, not all, but m many of the elimination riders having to double up with those team pursuits. So three team pursuits and elimination, a bronze medal and a gold medal for Yumi Kajihara. So not just tactically brilliant, but just with the endurance that she was able to just back up four big races on the same day, it just shows how much talent she has. It's a great ride. And of course, respectful and thankful to her teammates in that team pursuit. Bronze medal for the Japanese women. That does give us one more presentation to come, and it's the men's team sprint. Solid win there from my compatriots from Australia. You just see Matthew Glatzer just coming over. So Australia using four riders as they usually do. And that's going to be a big question as we head towards the Olympic Games. There are are some ways around it but the way the regulations sit you're only supposed to take three sprint riders to the olympic games within the quota now australia is one of the nations that regularly use four riders through the rounds and that's going to be a big question mark how they manage that at the olympic games it's matthew glatzer and tom cornish in position number three that usually swap in and out throughout the rounds 
So we'll wait to find out whether they must run with one of those riders and one will miss out. I'm not sure just yet how that's going to play out. Australia, of course, not the only nation that do a program like that. So really challenging for all of the coaches to just work out how they will configure their teams for the Olympic Games with the limited number of rider quotas that they are allowed. It's the same for the team pursuit as well. Not as much leeway as there has been previously at the Olympics. All set to go, riders are in position. So we're not too far away from the final medal ceremony to finish off this first day of competition here in Hong Kong, China of the Track Nations Cup for the UCI. Two more days of competition to come. Some big endurance events tomorrow. Men's Omnium gets underway. Women's sprints are also happening. And the men's Kirin, so the sprinters are back again in different disciplines. And the women's Madison is on tomorrow as well in the program. So some fantastic racing to come. Sprinters and the endurance riders. And we'll see the youth riders also coming back out for a couple of races as well. They won't be, the racing won't be broadcast, but we will do the presentations of the youth riders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awards ceremony of the 2024 Tissot Youth Celebrations Cup in Hong Kong, China. All set to go now for the final presentation to finish off this first day here in Hong Kong, China. And it's the men's team sprint. And there's the Aussies, the winners in the middle. Japan again in the mix and China A. So China A and China B, so two squads representing China. Once again showing really good depth amongst the Chinese sprint program. Australia, the only team on the podium to have used four riders. The big tall man on the right hand side, Matthew Glatzer, was in the qualifying round. And then Tom Cornish on the opposite side for Australia, doing the other two rounds. So China A, Gao Shanghai, Zhu Yu and Liu Qi, bronze medal for them. Also just noticing DHL as a sponsor on board as well for China. So great for them to have a big international partner like that. Silver medal. I've seen them a few times. The Japanese colours on the podium tonight. Yoshitaku Nagasako, Kaya Ota and Uta Obara. Gold medal, though, in the men's team sprint. They won in Adelaide a month ago. They were world champions two years ago. At the world championships last year in Glasgow, they got the silver medal. So they come into 2024 with something to prove as they head towards the Olympic Games in Paris. And the Australians come away here with their second Nations Cup gold medal of the season. So things are going well for the Aussies. Should be a great confidence booster for them. Matthew Glatzer, Lee Hoffman, Matthew Richardson and Tom Cornish. So they tried something different today with Cornish riding the final in position three. Matthew Glatzer has been 
rusted into that position over the last couple of years. This time he did the qualifying and then Cornish came in to do round one and then the final. So I personally am intrigued to see how that is going to play out over the next couple of months as we head towards Paris. And of course, the Netherlands, they will be looking to fight back. Disappointing ride by them this afternoon to finish in ninth place. And we know they're a lot better than that. Cornish, Richardson, Hoffman and Glatzer. Gold medal for Australia in the men's team sprint. That's the China B team showing their support for China A. So great camaraderie as well, which was also going to be fantastic for just developing their entire program. And with the backdrop coming down, that does wrap up our first day of three days of fantastic competition coming your way here in Hong Kong, China, the Track Nations Cup. This is round two of three. Milton in Canada is where they'll all head, or a lot of them will head to in the next month. So make sure you tune in for tomorrow night's competition. We have a huge program coming your way. Good night. You guys can win the championship. Oh, amazing. It's been a long day for us. Um, yeah, to get to get up in the gold in the final, Japan really gave it to us. We were surprised by them all day being so close, but we just stuck to our processes and in the final we've got uh, gained a bit more time on them. So yeah, it was good to stick to our process and win at the end of the day. So what do you think the key factors that actually you guys will win this competition? Oh, just getting to the final and then winning the final as well is a different story. You have to do three rides today and it's, it's very hard. We're lucky that we have four of us so we can switch to third wheel to keep the legs a bit fresher for the final. So, yeah, that was our plan. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my apologies. I threw to the end before we got to the interview itself. The Aussies, we had to listen from uh, he, Lee Hoffman there, just talking about how difficult the racing is for them. Even though they won, it certainly is a tough job. They put in everything. This is the schedule for tomorrow, Saturday's program here. I mentioned the Omnium for the men. We'll see the women come out for the Madison. So that's the endurance races. The women have their sprints competition and the men have their Kirin. So fantastic program for day two with the mixture of the Madison, which is a thrilling event, the Kirin for the men, the sprint, of course, and that men's Omnium, which is four disciplines throughout the entire day. So really difficult racing for the endurance men tomorrow. Make sure you tune in. It's a fantastic first day here in Hong Kong, China. Looking forward to day two coming up next.